to the next part of lesson 7.2. Now, I'm going to start by looking at this picture here. Now, this picture should look familiar from 7.1, where we have our initial ray here, and our terminal ray here, and our angle goes from the initial ray to the terminal ray. That's something we talked about in 7.1. We also talked about if you go counterclockwise, your angle is positive, and if you go clockwise, your angle is negative. That's all a review from 7.1. Now what I'm gonna do is look right here at this terminal ray. Now this terminal ray, I'm gonna say, goes through a point. And I'm just gonna call this point x comma y. So I don't actually know what the numbers are right now. I'm just gonna say it's some x value comma some y value. Now, if you notice, I can make a right triangle by going down to my point. Also, you've learned from junior high that side to side is x and up and down is y. So I can go back in this and make this side to side value, that's my x, and then this up and down is my y. Now, this hypotenuse side, this long side, they call that r because usually this point would go through some circle and that point is the radius of the circle. That's kind of how we think about it. But you can just know it as R right now. Now, let's take this and start to apply our SOHCAHTOA. So let's label our triangle first. So across from the right angle is always our opposite. Or sorry, <laughs> hello. Across from the right angle is always our hypotenuse. There we go. Now we need to figure out the angle we're focusing on. Whenever you draw your angle using these initial rays and terminal rays like we did in 7.1, your angle should always be close to the center or the origin. That's the angle we're focusing on, always, always. It's never this angle out here. That doesn't work. It's always the one in the middle. So if this is the one in the middle we're focusing on, next we go across from the angle we're focusing on, and that's our opposite. And then the one that's left over is our adjacent. So if I wanna do my sine, cosine, and tangent using this, you can start to see these rules. So sine, remember, so katoa is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, if I look here at my triangle, my opposite side is my y side. My hypotenuse side is my r side. That's where they came up with this y over r thing. So sine of theta isn't just opposite over hypotenuse. It's the y value over the r value. Now we can do the same thing with cosine. So, ka toa, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, my adjacent side is x, and my hypotenuse side is r. So that's where they got this x over r from. So now, cosine is not only adjacent over hypotenuse, it is the x value over the r value. Last one, tangent. Now we remember that tangent is SOHCAHTOA, so opposite over adjacent. Well, my opposite side is my Y, my adjacent side is my X. So now tangent isn't just opposite over adjacent, it's also Y over X. I didn't draw that box very well, let's try that again. Now, just like we had before, cosecant is paired with sine, and you'll notice it's just sine flipped. So instead of y over r, it's r over y. Secant is paired with cosine, so instead of x over r, 
it's r over x. And cotangent is paired with tangent, so instead of y over x, it's x over y. Those things stay the same. Now, these three rules, that sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x, those must be memorized. You need to have those in your head. One little trick that I've used in the past is that sine, I can use the i to draw a y. So then my sine is always y over r. And cosine, this o, if I'm a pirate, that would be the hole that I dig to find my treasure. And x always marks the spot where I dig. So cosine is always x over r. Tangent, you just have to remember, is y over x. But those are two little memory tricks I've used in the past to help me remember that y goes with sine and x goes with cosine. Now, now that we've talked about all of that and those definitions, in the next video we'll do an example problem where we apply these new definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent.